It's a battle for RMLL Junior B supremacy between the Calgary Shamrocks and the Edmonton Warriors here today from Bill Hunter Arena as these two teams continue their climb to the top of the mountain. The, the Warriors come into the game at 12-2, and two, sitting atop the North Division, while the Shamrocks come in at 12-3, and three, sitting atop the South Division. These two teams, of course, meeting in the provincial final last season with the Warriors emerging victorious. Starting in net for the Warriors, it will be a Tate Pinch. And in the other end for the Shamrocks, it'll be the big man, Josh Pilsner, getting the nod. We pick this one up with Luke Royer up top. That ball sent into Simonson, and that ball will get knocked into the corner. And that's sent back up to Ben Royer. Royer swings it to Dick, and he shoots it low. And Pilsner grabs out with his stick. And that's something the Shamrocks are going to want to see early as the Warriors got to Pilsner in that final early and often, they're going to need some better play from their goaltending in this one. Here are the Shamrocks. That ball sent in front. And that's going to be picked up momentarily by Wolney. Now the ball is going to go loose again, and he's going to pick it up. And he's going to send that up to Coleman Carey. Carey, as the Warriors looked, they had a three-on-two opportunity there, but Carey decided to change. And he did get that into Ben Royer, and he sent that wide. I'm going to say back in, and it's going to be a Warrior ball. Both of these teams come into this game averaging just around 11.5 goals per game. So both can fill the net. And the Shamrocks actually lead the league in the stingiest, with the stingiest defense, only giving up about 7.3 goals per game. Here's Dickin out in front, and he buries it low on Pilsner as he was allowed to walk right in front. It looked like it went 5-hole, and the Warriors grab an early 1-0 lead. As the Warriors jump out in front here, early. A little bit of a breakdown down low by the Shamrock defense. And Dickon really didn't really have to do much. He just sort of stepped in front of the net and fired it low on Pilsner. Simonson will jog it back into the Shamrock zone. 15 on the shot clock. Here's Stashnik out in front. That didn't connect with a cutting runcer. Here's Elliot. He swings it over to Simonson, who blasts that off of the mask of Pilsner. The Warriors will get a reset with Ben Royer grabbing that loose ball. Here's Royer. He'll reset the Warrior offense up top to Luke. The two cousins connect on that swing pass, and Luke will swing it back over to Ben. Ben cuts up top. He plays catch with Elliot. Now Royer sends it down low to Luke. Here's Luke Royer out in front, and that middle of the floor is accessible right now for the Warriors. Good stop there by Pilsner as that was sent in high by Royer, and it'll be Shamrock Ball as they look to get some offensive flow here early in this game. Here's Fletcher. That ball is swung over to the left side. Now Dick cuts in, and that ball was soaked by a Warrior defender. It looked like flat out in front. Dick runs in behind the net with the ball. He looks for somebody to give it to. No one's there. And with the shot clock winding down, he just throws that out in front, and it's going to be Warrior ball. Scratches in this one today. Tyler Andrews, Jaden Wibbs, Jacob, Jacob Chalman, Max Benham, and Rex Wolney out for the Warriors. And for the Shamrocks, Hale Dobbin, Blake Kleisinger, Trev, Trev, or sorry, Thaver Meyer, Oliver Miller, and Dylan Whitmore out for the Shamrocks. The ball is going to go loose here. It's going to be battled for its center. Dick tried to one-hand it. A little bit of a as they would call it, an Indian pickup, an old-school term. But the Shamrocks do eventually prevail on that loose ball as the shot, this 
oh, they actually, so the shot clock read 12, but they were counting it down. It was at about two. So that's why you saw the Shamrock send that in on pinch in desperation. And now the Warriors will transition it out. Here's Lanthier. He flips to Simonson as the Warrior offense hits the floor. Here's Elliot. Elliot tried to flip that inside to Dick or to Dewart. That was behind him, and he wasn't quite looking for it. That'll go into the corner, be picked up by the Shamrocks. As their offense gets set to work. Here's Fletcher. He set that up to Penny. Ball's back now with Fletcher. Fletcher off the right side. That ball swung over to the left side. That ball's knocked down by Pennock, who gets sort of thrown into the boards, but it really, and it was really his own momentum, and he took a shamrock out with him. Can't quite see his number. We'll let you know who that was as soon as it looked like number 10, Penny. It was indeed Penny. As both players sort of had their momentum carry them hard into the boards. No real foul there. The refs did a good job of leaving that one alone. It'll be Warrior Ball up top here. Starting at center with Ben Royer. Here's Royer with it. He swings it over to Dickin. Dickin to the half wall. To Dickin. Dickin. Simonson swings it over to Dick, and he goes down low to Dewart. Dewart swings it to Royer. Royer shoots that. That goes five-hole through Pilsner again, and it's 2 nothing Warriors. So the Warriors clearly uh, continuing with that theme of shooting at low on this Shamrock goaltender as they did last season. They go five hole again and it's two nothing. They lead with 15, 12 to go in the first period. Here's Dickin fighting through a bunch of traffic out in front. He tried to send that back up top to Elliott. He couldn't quite handle that. And now Simonson sends a shamrock down to the floor. That was Gorst. Now the shamrocks, Janicek, will spin off a check and get the shamrock offense started. Penny swings it over to Janicek, the shamrock leading scorer. Sent that ball down low. It's going to come loose out in front. And now there's a call coming up. A delayed penalty to the Warriors. Looks like Wolney will be sent off. And it'll be a Shamrock penalty. Shamrock power play, excuse me. Here's Janicek up top. He'll lead the Shamrock power play. Janicek skips that down low. Fletcher inside to a cutter. And he was sent to the floor. That was Seth Miller. The second leading scorer for the Shamrocks. Now a cross check. Is coming up to the Warriors, and the Shamrocks will go up five on three here momentarily. It'll be Brody Stashnik off for the Warriors. The rookie out of the Parkland Posse minor organization. And the Shamrocks will go to work here on a five on three. It'd be Janicek and Fletcher off the right side here. Yes. And that ball skipped down low to the far crease. That was Janicek hitting Dick. And good save there by Pinch as he got across. And Anna Farai Chuck will look to kill some of this 
remaining time on the man short. And Anna Farajcha comes out in front. He was on the wrong side of the floor. He lost the ball, and the ball will pop up to the Shamrocks, and they'll start back out up floor. Really key point in this game right now is the Shamrocks look to turn the tide here. Already down 2-0. Don't want to let the Warriors get too far out in front here. And then that, that's Miller firing at far side on Pinch. Pinch got a piece of it, but not enough. It's a big goal for the Shamrocks. They cut this Warrior lead down to one. The two leading scorers for the Shamrocks connecting on that one. And they get a big goal here early in this game to get within one. And they still remain on the power play. And now Wolney was sent down here. They're going to call a trip. And so that will do it for the Shamrock power play as they'll go four on four here. So some extra space here to work with for both of these offenses. You'll see a lot of two-man game, obviously. Here's Dickon. He cuts underneath, and he tried to go far side low on Pilsner. He fought that off. And here's Simonson with it up top. Here's Simonson. Comes up top with it. A little bit of a pull underneath, and he's got that ball back up top to Dickon. He fired it, and Pilsner stops that. Here's Dewart. Tried a little bit of a drag move on his defender. He was tied up. The ball's going to go loose. And now a Shamrock loses it. And now they're going to call a loose ball interference on the Warrior, or on the Shamrocks. It'll be Warrior ball. Here's Royer and Simonson off the left side here. As they're just going to hold this and wait for the power play to commence. There's only three seconds remaining on the Warrior penalty. Now Stashnik will come out of the box, and the Warriors will go five on four here for the next 54 seconds. Here's Simonson. Simonson, Dewart. Dewart winds and fires, and he put that into the chest of Pilsner. And now the Shamrocks will gain possession as they look to try and get this ball out, avoid the 10-second count. That was Page with it. He tried to get that to Dick, and it's turned over. Here's Royer on a breakaway, and he faked far side and threw a twister back short side, and it's 3-1 Warriors. And those are the types of plays that will absolutely kill you. Those turnovers that lead to fast break opportunities. And that's on a good day. And against this Warriors team, it'll be that much more costly. And now the obvious high stick is going to be called here on the Warriors. And the Shamrocks will take Pilsner out and go six on five. Here's Janicek up top. Yeah, that's going to be sent over to the left side. Janicek took a shot. That was blocked by the stick of Wellner Bait, and the Shamrock penalty or power play will go to work. Be Stashnik again. They're going to call it a slash. Really could have been called a high stick or a slash. Same difference here as. The Warriors will be shorthanded for two minutes or less. Here's Blake Anderson off the right shooter. He gets it up top to Janicek. Janicek over to Miller. Miller plays catch with Janicek. Janicek 
Skips that down to the far crease. Janicek up top. He tried to throw that to the far crease again. That didn't connect. That was Dick down low. Now the Warriors will run this out. Here's Menon. Menon will throw that out in front. Now Luke Royer will chase this down. But it's going to be picked up by the Shamrocks. Good loose ball there. And they'll transition this up the floor. And get the ball to their power play. That was Seaborn for the Shamrocks. Good work there. And now the Warriors looked like they weren't sure who had the ball there. And Blake Anderson took advantage of that. And he threw a sidearm low, far side on pinch. And it's 3-2 for the Warriors as their lead is cut down to one. And that is the second power play marker for the Shamrocks. As coming into this game, you knew power plays were going to be a large factor as this game played out. And the Warriors, you know, are pretty strong on specialty teams, and the Shamrocks were going to have to match that. And so far, their power play has converted a couple of times already. Now, a violation is going to be called. An interference call is going to be called on the Warriors. It'll be Shamrock Ball. Here's Janicek, the dangerous righty. Up top to Dick. And now Miller is going to wait for a pick. And now the ball is sent in to a cutter. The ball is going to go loose. And now it's picked up by the Shamrocks. And that was a good stop by Pinch. As Angles tried to go far side on him. And Anna Farajchuk picks that up. And he's going to hit Simonson off the bench. Simonson's just going to roll that over to Royer. Royer. He's going to go underneath, inside. And that's going to stay inside the crease, just in between the feet of Pilsner. And the carpet may have helped him there as it deadened the ball. and. Reduce the chances of him kicking that back into his net. Here's Fletcher. Fletcher off the half wall. He swings it over to the lefties and gets it back. Fletcher. He surveys. He gets it down low to Anderson. Anderson tried to hit Janicek inside. Ball pops up. Ball's going to get sent in towards the net. He's going to be picked up in a nice swim move there by Lanthier. As he transitions the ball with Wellner Bait. Wellner Bait. Luke Royer. Now, Lanthier on the crease, he had a severe angle there. Didn't really have much room. And now, with him stepping in the crease, it'll be Shamrock Ball. These two teams of meeting, of course, meeting for the first time this year. But it was the Warriors taking all three meetings last season. They won 9-8 in a thriller in overtime here at Bill Hunter Arena in the regular season. And then took meetings in the Provincials once in the round robin, 14-12. And then, as I mentioned earlier, 14-7 to in the Provincial Final on their way to the Founders' Cup and a bronze medal in Brampton, Ontario. And now Anna Farajchuk picks up that loose ball off the glass and goes untouched to the net. And he goes short side about hip high on Pilsner. It's 4-2 Warriors. The Warriors with their fourth goal already, as we mentioned earlier, Shamrock's only giving up about 7.3 goals per game. So the Warriors are eating four here with eight minutes to go in the first period. They're all well on their way to breaking that number. Here's Royer up top to his cousin Luke. Luke up, will operate from the top here. Here's Simonson. He steps up high. Swings that to Dewart. He tried to hit Luke Royer back door, but he had a foot in the crease. It'll be Shamrock ball. I hear the Shamrocks coming up in transition. And now there was a stiff check from behind. And... 
Coleman Carey knows it, and he'll uh, quickly jog to the box. It'll be a Shamrock penalty once again. They won't call it a check from behind. They're just going to give it two as they deem it a cross check. It's referee Jack Sylvan reports it to the box. Here's Janicek up top. He'll go to work with Miller, Dick, Anderson, and Fletcher on this Shamrock power play. Serious. That ball skipped to the right crease. Anderson tried to get back-to-back -back goals for the or Fletcher tried to get back-to-back -back goals here for the Shamrocks power play, but that didn't work. And now Anna Farajchuk will pick this loose ball up and traverse up over center. Here's Dewart off the right side. He works with Elliott. Elliott swings it over to Simonson. The lanky lefty will dodge a check up high. He sent one in short side. That goes wide. That'll be back over and it'll be Shamrock ball. Here's Seaborn for the Shamrocks. And he gets it to Janicek, and with a minute to go in the power play and six minutes to go in the opening frame, they'll try to get one back here. Fletcher, far crease. He skipped that ball down low. Now the ball's over with Anderson, and he reached around up high on pinch. Great shot there by the righty, and it's 4-3. That's a great job by Anderson, changing the release point on that shot. You could see him sort of come up with his stick. He went from sidearm to overhand, and he got pinched leaning just a little bit, and he sniped the far top corner to cut this Warrior lead back down to one. Near the Warriors with possession here. They've been definitely the better team off of draws here so far as they've got the majority of those extra possessions. Now the ball's going to roll back over center and the shot clock's going to expire. And I didn't quite see what happened. Something happened. I didn't quite catch it. We'll see what the call is here. Uh, but it is going to be a penalty to the Warriors. It is. De yeah, I thought maybe it was delay a game. As the ball was batted da back down the floor by Menon. And it will be a Shamrock power play again. As they've already tallied three power play goals in this game. And they'll look to tie this game up here. And honestly, it didn't really seem that late. It was a fraction late, but that's why I was a bit surprised. I didn't wasn't quite sure what they were calling, but it indeed was delay a game. Up top, that ball is swung to that right crease to Fletcher. He collects it off of the wall. And now Janicek rips it from out way outside as he pulled it back to that short side and it's 4-4 as the Shamrocks get even as they get their fourth power play goal of this game. And that was ripped by from Airdrie from way out. And a good shot there by Janicek. Quick release as the shot clock was winding down. And it's all even at four. And if you're watching at home, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to pick up on some trends here. Warriors going low on Pilsner with success. And the Shamrocks going high on Pinch with success. Now Dwyer. The face-off man is going to come up over center. As a faulty chalk clock exp expiration went off there. And 
Shamrocks looked to push and transition, but that was thrown away into the stick of flat. The speedster's going to come out over center. The former Junior A minor spent 2022 with the Junior A club back down in Junior B now with the Warriors, and they're very happy to have him. Transition that out, and now the Warriors, with only 10 seconds to go in the shot clock, will look to press here. And now Royer hit Elliott with a good backdoor cut, and Pilsner got across there with a nice save. The Shamrocks will come out over center floor. That's the ever-dangerous Janicek with it now. He gets it to Anderson. Already two goals in this game. He's on hat-trick watch. He's been very impressive in this game so far. Fletcher got it down low to Janicek, who then hit a cutting Ander, a cutter, and I think it was Anderson who was cutting, and the ball went awry, but the Warriors are going to go back to the box, and Stashnik's going to take his third penalty here uh, with a slash, and the Shamrock pat power play, already having scored four on the man advantage, is going to go back to work. Three minutes to go. Shamrocks four Warriors four here from Bill Hunter Arena and a good one. Now up top, that was Janicek swinging it to the far right left crease. Now the shot came in, good stop there by Pinch. Now Wolney was sort of caught up with a Shamrock defender. And I wasn't looking at the officials. They either called 10 seconds or they called too many men on the Warriors. Either way, it'll be Shamrock possession with a fresh 30. Janicek up top. Tried to get that to Fletcher. He mishandled that, but he collects that loose ball. And now... They run something off of the right side, and Anderson with a bounce shot off of the turf. That's stopped by Pinch. And now he's going to airmail that up into the ceiling, and it'll be Shamrock Ball. Anderson will wait for reinforcements here as the Shamrock power play returns to the floor. Warriors need a kill here as they've been decimated on the man short here in this first period. Janicek swings it far crease. Janicek back up top. Good stop there by Pinch. As the Shamrocks on this power play have elected to try to go low. But Pinch has been able to handle those. And now Lachlan Gordon with a good roll off of the boards. As he preserves possession here for the Warriors. And now Royer will step back. And look to kill the rest of this possession. Here's Dewart. He comes off of the far wall and takes a shot on Pilsner. It was stopped. And there's a kill for the Warriors as they desperately needed one. And with one minute to go in this first period, we still sit at Shamrock's four Warriors four, remaining deadlocked. Here's Dick off the far half wall. Ball swung over. That ball was sent into a Shamrock cutter. That was Seth Miller. He got knocked down. And now Cole Stashnik will come out transition. Stashnik out oh, on a partial breakaway. He was sort of cut off by a Shamrock defender. And that was stopped by Pilsner. And the Warriors will gain possession off of the shot. Here's Simonson. He patiently waits. He waits for a pick. Royer will set that. Ball swung over to Dickin. Sorry, to Elliott. Simonson took a long outside shot into the stick of Pilsner. And the Shamrocks will take a timeout with last possession. You can expect them to pull Pilsner. And we'll take a quick timeout. We'll be back with you right here for the conclusion of the first period here in just about 30 seconds on Crowlax TV.
And now we pick this back up with the Shamrocks just holding here, waiting to run their six on five set here. And again, they'll wait for about eight seconds on the clock. Here they go. Janicek fires that. That went off of a Warrior Defender. And now the ball's going to go into the boards. It's going to be fought for, but time's going to run out. And we're going to head into the first intermission with this score. The Calgary Shamrocks 4 and the Edmonton Warriors 4. You've been watching Junior B Tier 1 action here on Crolax TV. We'll take a 10-minute break and be right back here with you in just under 10 minutes time see you then
And welcome back into Bill Hunter Arena, where we sit deadlocked. Warriors 4, Shamrocks 4, as we start this second period of play. And the Warriors are going to win this draw. And Lathier is going to bring this out of the mix here. But they're going to say there was some type of interference, and it's going to be Shamrock ball. So the one thing that you really notice, at least, you know, if you're sitting at home watching this game, is the Shamrocks have done a pretty good job of taking those backdoor cuts away off ball from the Warriors. And conversely, the Warriors have done a very good job of capitalizing on their opportunities and, and shooting, uh, you know, in good spots on Pilsner, shooting low and putting the ball at his feet. Something to look for as this game goes along. And off of that stop by Pinch, it's going to be Wellner Bait out over center. Wellner Bait is going to stop up. And dish this off to Dewart. Here's Dewart. He's going to get it over to Luke Royer. Royer up top. Ball over with Ben Royer. Royer off of the far half wall. Gets it down low to Simonson. The shot clock's going to expire. It's going to be Shamrock ball. Here are the Shammies out over center. Anderson gets that low. Ball's brought up. Ball now off the left side here. Swung by Miller. And Dick inside, and that's a good stop by Pinch, and then a rebound, and another stop by Pinch, is that loose ball was picked out, up, out in front, and Pinch makes consecutive big saves there, This is as the Shamrocks look for their first lead of the game. Ball's flipped up to Dickin, Dickin is going to take on a couple of Shamrocks to the net, and he tried to reach around goaltender Pilsner, and good stop there by Pilsner as he answers those two stops by Pinch down on the other end. As these two goaltenders look to solidify their respective ends here. Now the ball's going to be turned over here. And here's Lanthier out in transition. He pulls it around a couple of Shamrock defenders. Then he's eventually tied up. Ball's going to go loose to Wellner Bate. Wellner Bate sends it back up to center. Picked up by Anna Farajchuk. Anna Farajchuk looks like he's going to stay out and play some offense here. Uh, is that something that... The veteran can definitely do. Probably should do it more often. And the ball's going to go into the corner. There's a faulty reset. They're going to count it down. It's going to be a shamrock possession here. Here's Seaborn for the shamrocks. He hands it off to Say. Say comes inside and he was able to walk down the middle of the floor. Tried to go five hole on pinch. That was a pretty easy stop for the netminder. And Flett will get the ball up the floor for the Warriors. Here's Royer off the bench. He gets it to Elliot. Elliot comes up high with it, swings it over to Royer. Now the ball's over. With Luke Royer back to Elliott. Dickin back door to uh, cutting Ben Royer. That was something that the Shamrocks had really taken away early in this game. But the Warriors get a good look there. Not able to convert. And now the Shamrocks will come away with it. That was Gorse with it. Now Janicek off of the right side. Miller, Janicek, that was a shot from distance. And then Miller again with the rebound, and that's stopped by Pinch. And you've seen Miller grab that loose change in front of the net now a few times in this game. Good response there by Pinch to fight that off. Here's Dewart. Dewart winds and fires into the paraphernalia of Pilsner. He stops that now. Good pass out over center. Here are the Shamrocks in transition. Breakaway, Anderson. And that looked like it hit a piece of the bar. Good transition play there. And that was started with a good outlet pass by Pilsner. A big man can definitely pass the ball. It's something that I've noticed in the past. Good touch on that. 
And good look there by the Shamrocks. Here's Dewart. He fires it! Short side! And it, the Warriors reclaim the lead. 5-4. The big righty really stepped into that one and pulled it short side top corner as he had Pilsner leaning just a little bit to the far side. Great shot there by the righty, and it's 5-4 Warriors. And a nice backdoor cut there. That was Fletcher, I believe, this time. It was. Good stop there by Pinch, who's been really good here in the second period. He's made about five really good saves. Shamrocks have carried the play here in the second period, but it's been the Warriors that have capitalized on their opportunity, and they lead 5-4. Now backdoor. Simonson's pushed away, and... That's thrown into the stick of Pilsner. Now another nice pass by Pilsner. Shamrock's out in transition. That's going to be stopped up there. That's 15. High camp for the Shamrocks. Now Anderson, who's been really dangerous in this game, takes a shot in on pinch. That's stopped. And the Warriors are going to look to push this one up the floor. Pinnock to Flett. Flat, who's on the wrong side of the floor, and Shamrock's gaining numbers back, will hand off to Elliott and get the offense onto the floor. Elliott. Dickin winds and fires. That bounced harmlessly off the floor into Pilsner. And now O'Dwyer is going to come over center, waiting for help. And get that off to the Shamrock offense to go to work. Here's Say in the near corner. Say waiting for a pick. He's tied up there by Stashnik. Here's Fletcher. Fletcher with the shot clock winding down. That hit a Shamrock. And it's going to be blown dead as he tries to gather himself. Uh, as the trainer steps onto the floor to attend to him, we'll take a little bit of a timeout, and we'll be right back here on Crolax TV. So with 13-13 to go, second period, we pick it back up. The Warriors leading 5-4 over the Shamrocks. Warriors 12-2, Shamrocks 12-3 as these two teams sit up atop their respective divisions. Here's Dickin. He's going to send that wide, and it's going to bounce up into the ceiling. It'll be Shamrock ball. The Shamrocks are going to come out over center here. Ball is going to sit on the half wall on the far side here and be swung over to say. Say Miller tried to hit a cutter there. He sent down to the floor. That was Fletcher. And now Carey comes up in transition. Here's Carey in front to Royer. Simonson. Elliot. Elliot. Simonson up top. Royer to Elliott. Elliott looks for someone. He saw Ben Royer coming free in the middle, but the ball bounced into the carpet. It's going to lead to a shot clock expiration. 
and the uh, Shamrocks will come away with it, and that's Gorst. This game's slowing down here a little bit right now as a little bit of a lull gets hit here midway through the game. Game's still well in the balance. Ball swung over to Dick. He's waiting for a pick. It finally comes, but Highcamp was belted and pulled away from setting the pick. And now the shot clock's going to expire. It's going to be Warrior Ball. Here's Walner Bait, the Sherwood Park product. Hands off to Runcer, another Sherwood Park product. Elliot. Elliot off of the half wall. He tries to go underneath. He's going to lose it. Ball's going to go loose. And good defense. Good, good slide there and good collapse there by the Shamrock defense as they cause that turnover. And it's going to be their ball here with 11 minutes to go in the second period. Warriors 5, Shamrocks 4. And the ball's going to be brought up. Miller. And he swung out over to Fletcher. He wound and fired. Good stop there by Pinch. And a good loose ball there by Gordon out of the corner. He'll get that up to Flett. He's going to push here in transition. Flett to the far crease. That's going to be knocked down by a good stick. And now Dwyer is belted, but he got up in transition and sent in a Shamrock on a breakaway as he stepped around, pinch, faking short side and going far side. That was 29 for the Shamrocks. McLean. And he evens this one up at fives with 10.24 to go in the second period. And the Shamrock's going to come back out in transition, but stop up and get a full complement of offense out on the floor. And that was the Shamrock's first even strength marker of the game. They have had a lot of good looks, though, in this second period. It was a matter of time. Now the ball is going to be battled for out in front as Anna Farajcha couldn't come up with it. But now Lanthier does. But now he's going to be checked by Gorst. But then the ball comes free to Dickin. Dickin, nice flip pass out in front to Royer. Royer gets stopped there by Pilsner. He picks that loose ball back up. And gets it to Ben. Ben over to Dickin. Dickin. Takes that shot. Inside to Royer, who bounces that low on Pilsner. Short side, and it's 6-5 Warriors as they quickly regain the lead. And it almost looked like Royer threw a changeup as it he didn't almost, it almost looked like he didn't really release or shoot the ball. It kind of dropped out of his stick, but he had Pilsner being pulled across the net and it had enough to get in behind the net minder. And it's the Warriors up once again, as the Shamrocks still haven't hold a, held a lead in this game yet. Warriors six, Shamrocks five. Warriors. Now on a Farajchuk stepped into one in transition, looking for his second of the game. Stopped by Pilsner. Now the Shamrocks will come out on offense. Ball sent inside. 
Not able to get caught, though, as it was a little bit wide of its intended target. And it's going to be a shot clock violation to be Warrior Ball. Here's Carey. Royer. Now to Dewart, near boards. Dewart. Swings it over to Ben Royer. He goes inside to Luke Royer as he feeds his cousin and he dives across the crease with a nice finish and it's 7-5 Warriors. Referees discuss a little bit here near the box, but we're all good to go. And the Warriors, with another two-goal lead, haven't had that in a while. And now Dick in here with a bit of a swim move. Up top to Ben, who hits Luke. Elliot. Elliot winds and fires into the midsection of Pilsner. And Gorst will come up with it. Gorst. They got two on one here. Gorst inside. And he shoots that low on pinch. He stops that. Now Gorst is pushed into the end boards. But he's going to pick that loose ball up. He's pinned against the boards by a couple of Warriors. But now the ball just sort of was dropped out of his stick. P smart play there. Dick picked that up. He sent that over to the right side. Shot came. Now the ball's going to get knocked out to the restraining line. Picked back up by the Shamrocks. And they have 10 seconds to work with on the shot clock. Here's Fletcher winding and firing. That goes off of a Warrior. And the shot clock's going to expire. And it'll be a Warrior ball. Warrior 7, Shamrocks 5, 6.55 to go here, middle frame. And a meeting of the last three Alberta champions and going to the founders. And that ball was sent in front of Simonson. Good opportunity. He caught a piece of Pilsner to be Warrior ball. But yes, indeed, these, three, these two teams have gone to the last three founders, Shamrocks in 2018 and 19. Of course, winning the Founders Cup in 2019 and the Warriors going last year, getting a bronze and defeating the Shamrocks in the provincial final by a score of 14 to 7. So two teams that know how to win going at it here from Bill Hunter Arena, two teams with pedigree and two teams that, even though they don't meet all that often, don't like each other. And the ball is going to be sent in. It looked like it got a piece of a defender. And now Stashnik's going to push this in transition. He speeds up out in front, directly in front of Pilsner, and shoots that overhand far side. And it's 8-5 Warriors. Basically just went in a straight line down the floor. Took one step across his defender and shot that short side. And the Warriors have their biggest lead of the game. 8-5. This is... It's fair. And like I said, nothing fancy there. Just aggressive, push the pace lacrosse there. And Stashnik capitalizing on that opportunity. Warriors threatening to extend this one out right now. Shamrocks need one bad. Here's Dickin. A little bit of a drag move. Gets out up top to Ben Royer who ripped that. Looked like it caught crossbar. Ball's going to bounce back into the Warrior zone. It's going to be a reset. Luke Royer.
It's going to take a hard hit there from Gorst. Ball's going to be picked up on the loose ball by Ben Royer with a behind-the-back shot. Stopped by Pilsner. Now Simonson's going to tie up with a Shamrock. Look like Colton. Simonson's going to take the only penalty, and it's going to be a Shamrock power play. With 4.57 to go second period. And this is a point in the game where the Shamrocks really need one. A TSN turning point, if you will, if they can get one. 9.5 is a lot different than 8.6. That's sort of that threshold. You're within two or three, you're in the game. Once it starts getting to four or five. It could be really hard to come back, especially this point in the game against a team that knows how to win like the Warriors. Now off of the power play, a shot was taken from the right side. Ball's going to be sent out, and here's Menon. Menon in. Menon coming across the net, and he capitalizes shorthanded. It's the Warriors 9 and the Shamrocks 5. That's a bit of a backbreaker if you're the Shamrocks. As good as their power play has been, that one really hurts to give up at this point in the game. That Warrior leads now 4. 4.36 to go, second period. Warriors 9, Shamrocks 5. And as they battle for this in the near corner, the ball is going to come out to Anderson. That ball gets knocked down, soaked by the Warrior penalty kill. It's going to be Warrior ball. And as great of a game as lacrosse can be, it also can be a pretty cruel game. As the Shamrocks really carried the play here in the second period for the first half, you know, 10 to 12 minutes. And Pinch made some great saves. And next thing you know, the Warriors capitalize on a few opportunities, mostly in transition. And they've got a four-goal lead here, and the Shamrocks are in trouble. Here's Dickon out in front. And he spins through two, two Shamrocks. That was... That was, uh, let's say, not the best execution defensively. And that's a back-breaking goal as the Warriors add a second shorthanded goal. And they double up on the Shamrocks 10-5. Fear the Shamrocks, that can't happen. And a morale-busting type goal against... And with 3.34 to go, it's the Warriors 10, Shamrocks 5. Ball off the draw. It's picked up by the Shamrocks, and they'll head into the Warriors zone. So you talked about to, for lack of a better phrase, a TSN turning point. It was 8-5. Shamrocks go to the power play. They've since given up two, what I would call, pretty disappointing goals against. And it's now 10-5 Warriors. Here's Lanthier with it. He hands off to Dewart. Simonson. The Warriors threaten to pull away here. Simonson. Bit of a pick set there by Ben Royer. Not much going on here. Ball is swung over to Elliott. That's ripped off of the leg of a Shamrock defender. Now the ball is going to go loose. Picked up. Good loose ball there by Seaborn. The ball is going to be sent over to McLean as he looks to get the ball out safely for the Shamrocks. McLean back with it. Fletcher. 
the Warriors press here. Just perhaps smelling some blood in the water here. His momentum's really shifted. Hard pick there set by Fletcher. Miller ended up with it on a swing pass. He ripped that into Pinch. Good stop there. Pinch has been quite good here in the second period. Anderson. Ball here is with Highcamp. Highcamp swings it over to Fletcher. And with a running shot across the top, that was Janicek. Good stop there by Pinch. The Warriors will come out over center. Flat hands off to Dickin. Warrior leading scorer. Runcer. Simonson. Ball swung back and was sent into a cutting dick, and he's tied up there by a Shamrock defender. Now the Shamrocks will come back over center with it. Ball is thrown into the corner, picked up back, picked back up by the Shamrocks, and Anderson will start back up with it for the Shamrocks. Anderson to the far half wall. Shot sent in from way out. Easily stopped by Pinch. That was Ferrati with that shot. Now Royer tried to break in off the bench. It's a tough pass to handle. It was behind him. And now the Shamrocks are going to throw it away. And the Warriors are going to look to have last possession here in the second period. Warriors 10, Shamrocks 5. 25 seconds to go here in the second period. Dewart jogs in off the right side. He rolls back. Dewart swings it over to Royer. Here, Royer slips off a check. Tried to fire that back door to Dickin. Now, Royer went and picked that loose ball up behind the net. Now it's going to be set down the floor, but Pinch is still in the net. And the ball goes harmlessly into the glass, and it's going to end the middle frame with the score. The Warriors 10, the Shamrocks 5. And we thank you for joining us here on Crolax TV as we're here with you all summer long through the playoffs, through the Provincials in Beaumont as a... Junior B champion will be crowned and sent off to Port Coquitlam, BC for the Founders Cup, the national championship of the Junior B division. And again, we thank you for joining us along that journey. We'll take a 10-minute break and be back right here on the channel for third period action. It's the Warriors 10, Shamrocks 5. See you in about nine and a half minutes time.
As we get back here inside the Bill Hunter Arena, it was the Warriors going on a late second period run, a uh, number of goals in transition, a couple of them shorthanded as they start to pull away here. They lead 10-5 entering this third period. Now off the draw, Shamrocks won the ball, but now they're going to throw it away. It's going to be battled for. And they're going to say it's going to be Shamrock Ball. Here's Janicek down the right side. Janicek. They finally get their reset. Ball's going to be thrown into the board. It's going to be missed on the loose ball by Anderson. And Anna Freicek will say, I'll take that. Menon. Near boards. He's met there by Shamrock Defender. He threw that over the head of Ben Royer. Ben will go back to collect that. And come back into the Shamrock zone. Here's Royer. Out in front. He gets stopped by Pilsner. Menon gets bumped in behind the net. And... The Shamrocks are going to come out with the ball. Here's McLean. He'll stop up and hand off to Fletcher. Fletcher defended there by Flett. Fletcher back out high with it. Rolls back down the wall. Fletcher looking for someone. Say. The shot clock's going to expire. Absolutely nothing going on there. And the Sh Warriors are going to regain possession. Here's Simonson. Really slow start to this third period. Both of these teams look maybe a little bit mentally and physically drained right now. Royer. Simonson picks the ball up. Ball is going to go loose, and it'll be back-to-back -back shot clock possessions. And now O'Dwyer coming in. He puts his shoulder into the Warrior defender. That was Stashnik. He takes that shot. It's fought off by Pinch. It'll be Warrior ball. Here's Lanthier. It's been pretty solid in transition all season long for the Warriors. Gets it back to Royer. Royer hops around a check. Royer, a little bit of a give and go with Runcer. Went off his stick. And now Simonson stepped off of the wall and took a sidearm off the post. And the Warriors will get a reset. As you got to think, though, they'll, they'll be very happy with those types of possessions. Just getting resets and draining clock. Playing back-to-back. Both teams obviously playing back-to-back -back games here. Both winning yesterday. The Warriors victorious at home. Where they haven't lost all year. They're actually 8-0 coming into the game. Looking to go to 9-0 at home. They were victorious. And the Shamrocks beating the Outlaws yesterday 11-8 in Beaumont. The Warriors, of course, beating Manitoba yesterday 9-6. Here's Royer. Back door to Dickon. That went wide. It's going to be picked up by the Shamrocks, and they'll head back out. Ball's brought over center. Shamrocks will look to go to work. Here's Janicek. Janicek. Fletcher was tied up high there. Pretty strong hold there. It goes uncalled. The ball was sent in harmlessly to pinch, and it'll be a warrior ball. Here's Carey. Elliot. Dewart. Bit of a stalemate here, and the ball's ripped off the far post by Dewart. And again, this type of 
game flow really favors the Warriors right now is they'll just look to turn that scoreboard into an hourglass and let it slip away. Shamrocks really have to do something here. They got to try and change the overall feel of this game right now. As their offense hits the floor. Got to go on a run and got to do it now if you're the Shamrocks. Ball up top. Miller. Miller inside. And Miller tried to go short side and really good stop there by Pinch as he trapped the ball against the carpet. Deadening that one out. It'll be Warrior ball. And that was one the Shamrocks really had to have. That was a really good cut there by Miller off ball. And... Pinch just better there as he was able to make that stop. And Pinch really was the difference in the second period. Because the whole feel of this game changed after he made about six really good saves in the first half of that period. And the Warriors answered with, felt like scoring on almost every opportunity they had. Here's Say out of the far corner. Say is met there by Gordon. Ball is attempted to be sent into a shamrock, but the ball just bounces off the turf into Pinch's stick. And the Warriors, again, just draining clock here, will come back up over center. 14 minutes to go, third period. Warriors 10, shamrocks 5. Dick in, winds and fires right into the crest. The logo on that shamrock jersey of Pilsner. That Clover took a beating by the ball there. Here's Gorst. He's going to be doubled here by Wilner Bate and Royer. Then they'll take the ball away and head up the floor. Wilner Bate winds up. Tosses that to Simonson, who tried to swing that over to Runcer, who was standing on that far crease. He'll go pick that loose ball up, drops it to Luke Royer. Royer picks it up off the carpet. Swings it to Dewart off the bench. Dewart bounce shot into Pilsner. He stops that. And he'll throw that up. Shamrocks look to push here. Now they'll stop up. And that was Moen in transition. Here's Janicek up top. Anderson. Say, looking for someone. Here's Janicek inside. His angle really deteriorated there as he was off to the wrong side of the floor. Easy stop there by Pinch. Ball bounces back down into Pilsner. Should be a reset there. Didn't get one. And... Now there's a penalty coming up to the Warriors. Ball goes way up high over the protective mesh out of play. It's going to be a Shamrock penalty. As we sit here, 12-15 to go, third period. Warriors 10, Shamrocks 5. And of course, coming up here right from the Bill Hunter Arena, right after, it's going to be the Edmonton Miners sitting in first place of the Junior A division taking on the Calgary Mountaineers who are on a winning streak of their own in a clash of the two finalists from last year's RMLL playoff as the Miners defeated the Mountaineers four games to one on their way to a Minto Cup final appearance where they eventually lost to the Whippy Warriors. That's right here from the Bill Hunter Arena, and you can watch that game on HN Live. Shot sent in by Anderson, stopped by Pinch, and here's Gordon. The big intimidating force out of the back gate is going to drop it. It'll be a back over, and it'll be a Shamrock ball. A little more urgency is going to be needed here from the Shamrocks. If they're going to get back into this one. It's got to start now with this power play opportunity. 
Here's Say off of the left crease. Dick up top to Janicek. Janicek winds and fires. That gets blocked by a warrior stick. And then it was picked up by Say on the crease. And he buried that into the jersey of Pinch. And Anna Farajchuk will slow play this up the floor. In what is a hot, muggy arena here in West Edmonton. Of course, host of the Minto Cup. And I wonder if the Miners are going to invest in some industrial fans or something of that nature for the tournament. As it's not too, too bad here today, this afternoon, but last night, it was awful. As much as I love this arena, and it really, truly is one of the best arenas in Canada for lacrosse. So much history, so much tradition. It's really the Queen's Park of Alberta. But at the same time, when this thing gets packed, and it does offer some positives in terms of atmosphere and and everything like that, but it, it is it is a little bit difficult, especially for the players when it gets that hot and muggy in here. And I have to wonder if the miners will address that as we head into July and August and the playoffs start to happen and obviously the Minto Cup. Here are the Shamrocks. McLean. He's going to swing that over to say a little bit of a dangerous pass as Menon was right there. Ball is going to be swung over to Anderson. And as Miller gets cleaned out, they'll call a cross check on the Warriors and it'll be another Shamrock power play. And what has been a really uneventful third period here, the Shamrocks, this is really their last gasp. They have to start showing some fire and urgency here and try to capitalize on this power play with only nine and a half minutes remaining. And now in front, that was Dick off of the left crease. Nice pass inside. He was stopped by Pinch, who's had a solid game here for the, sh for the Warriors. Now, a bad pass here is sent up over Anderson's head. It's going to be Warrior Ball. Unforced turnover by the Shamrocks. Here's Anna Farajchuk. Tried to jump inside there, past a couple of Calgary defenders. Got stripped, and it'll be Shamrock Ball. Also on the out-of-town scoreboard today, in the Junior A loop, you'll have the Raiders hosting the SWAT. And we already talked about the Miners, about to host the Mountaineers here from Bill Hunter. And then in BC, you'll have Nanaimo visiting Poco. And, and Victoria visiting New West. That's out West. And we'll take a look at the Ontario schedule here in a second. Janicek sent that in on pinch. That stopped. Here's Carey. Carey up to Flett. That goes errantly into the end boards. Now the ball is just going to be circled back by Luke Royer. So the Warriors are content to drain more of this penalty off. And now Royer out front, and nobody cross-checked him or really did anything, and he just stepped across his defender and fired it behind the back into the net, and it's 11-5 Warriors. And we've seen that, and you can see the frustration from the Shamrock coaching staff as nobody made contact with Royer. We've seen that a couple of times, and he just walked out in front and sh shot the ball in the net. Fancier finish this time, albeit. But that's, yeah, and I don't blame the Shamrock coaching staff for being frustrated with that. That's, a lot of that's just effort and focus. So on the Ontario out-of-town scoreboard, you've got Brampton visiting Burlington as Burlington continues their playoff push. 
Kitchener into Six Nations. Whitby playing the undefeated Orangeville Northmen. And that looks like it. what they have on the schedule coming up here in Ontario as we push towards the Mental Cup here in Edmonton in late August. So we sit here, 11-5 Warriors. Here's Runcer. Dewart. That shot's blocked by the Shamrocks. And here's Seaborn. For the Shamrocks, he gets knocked down by the boards. And thankfully for him, it was a little bit of a ways from the boards as he almost went head first into the bottom of the boards. And now the ball is going to be sent back up. The Warriors transition at Simonson's got Elliot off the bench. Elliot with a nice move, but they're going to call him in the crease. He faked far side with a little bit of a dip and came back short side. And they say he stepped in and it'll be Shamrock ball. As this one gets played out here, Gorst bounces that well wide. Ball is going to bounce back out and Stashnik... Had it for a second, had some traffic there, tripped down, but the Warriors will easily gather that back up and flat. We'll move the ball up the floor. Here's Dewart with it. Plays catch with Ben Royer. Here's Dewart. Dewart. Pick there set by Elliot. Dewart down underneath, and that was stopped by Pilsner. Ball's going to bounce back into the Shamrock crease. And the Warriors yell for back in, but that was clearly not back in as the Warrior player reached over the top of the Shamrock player and knocked the ball back into the Shamrock crease. Plus, it has to be intentional. Here's the Shamrocks. Up the floor, say. It's going to be met there by an aggressive Wolney. And say cuts inside. That's going to be stopped by Pinch. Carey's going to jog this back up the floor. Has really not, nothing much going on in this game right now. Carey. You could feel the energy and pace of this game just absolutely disappear after those warrior after those warrior transition goals and against the flow of play and then especially after those two back-to-back -back shorthanded goals on the same kill. The game, the energy out of the game just left. Here's Dick. Dick. Got that to high camp. And then a nice behind the back by Fletcher. That goes off bar. That's one of the better shots you'll see. Really nice release there by Fletcher. Uh, but unfortunately for him, it found iron and not mesh. The Warriors look to basically just wind this shot clock and game clock down now. Dickin out of the sort of half wall corner area sent that one in on Pilsner. Maybe a Shamrock ball. 3.30 to go. Warriors in full control of this one as they lead 11-5. And they look to continue their undefeated run at home. Looking to go to 9-0 and inside Bill Hunter Arena. And 13 and 2 overall. And the Shamrocks look like they're going to fall to 12 and 4, still comfortably sitting atop the South Division. Flett will get it over to Anna Farichuk off of the shot clock expiration. It'll be a Warrior ball. Royer off the left side. Royer. Tried a little behind the back pass, but there was nobody there, and it was into the ground. Here's Dickin. Dickin again walks through two Shamrocks, and it's 12 5 Warriors. And that just can't happen.
I think this is one if you're the Shamrocks, you just store away in the vault and use it as motivation moving forward. Much more important games moving forward. And you would expect, I mean, it, although it's far from a given because in the South Division, they're going to have to go through either the Mountaineers or the Okotoks Marauders, and both of those teams can play. So it's going to be far from a given that they're going to be at the Provincials. But they have as good a chance as anybody to be there, obviously. But they're going to have to clean some things up if they expect to return there for what would be the at least the fifth year in a row. Ball's going to be bounced off of the turf. It's going to be picked up by Carey. Anna Farajchuk grabs this one. It's going to hand off to Simonson. And the regular season can be a grind. A lot of the time, the motivation might not be quite be there. And they obviously played yesterday. The Warriors did as well. But nonetheless, uh, this is definitely not the Shamrock's A game. We'll say that. Here's Elliot. Uh, it goes off boards. Simonson picks the loose change up, fires it in on Pilsner. And they'll get another reset. Now if they're going to call a moving pick on the Warriors. It'll be Shamrock Ball. And the last time the Founders' Cup saw an Alberta rep that wasn't one of these two teams. You have to go all the way back to 2017 when Red Deer went to Saskatchewan and made the Founders' Cup final, losing it to Orangeville. Now the ball is thrown into the middle. It's picked up by Lanthier, and he's just going to come out into the Shamrock zone. Dewart picks that up off the boards. Throws it into the open net. And it's the Warriors 13, the Shamrocks 5. So, I mean, if you're the Warriors, there's obviously things you can take away out of this game that you can do better. And you know that this wasn't the Shamrock's best. At the same time, you've got to be happy with this convincing win. And again, you know when this game turned, it's, I think it's pretty obvious to anybody that's familiar with the sport. And the Shamrocks have come away with this from this game looking to rebound as they have a couple games coming up against division rivals. And if you're the Warriors, I think you're just going to take the positives, and there were plenty of them out of this game, and move forward as... They continue to establish themselves as the team to beat in the RMLL Junior B division. And maybe get a different goal song. I'll say that again. I just think you can do so much better. But if that's your biggest concern, you're doing well. So from here, from the Bill Hunter Arena, the final score will be the Edmonton Warriors 13, the Calgary Shamrocks 5. The Warriors going to 13-2 and two and the Shamrocks falling to 12-4. and four. For Krolax TV, I'm Muhammad Joma and my partner, Brandon. We thank you for joining us. Hit that subscribe button. We're here all through the season, regular season, playoffs, and provincials as we take you all the way up to the Founders' Cup in Poco, BC. Again, there's the Edmonton Warriors 13, the Calgary Shamrocks 5. We thank you for joining us here on Krolax TV, and until next time, so long.